I sleep too much. I eat too much sugar. I am not healthy enough. I don't work out enough. Uh, that means I failed. Hey, do subscribe. Chances are you have done one of the following things. Come up with New Year's resolutions. Read a book about improving your productivity. Compared yourself to somebody who's super successful on social media. Hopped onto a dietary or workout trend to achieve a certain body goal. Thought about getting plastic surgery, fillers, or Botox. And congratulated yourself on pulling that all-nighter to finish that paper or do some extra work. So. How many of the statements that I just mentioned resonate with you? And if you think about them for a minute, what do all of these things have in common? If you said they are a form of self-improvement, you would be correct. Now, none of these things are inherently good or bad, but all of those can lead to a pretty messed up mental state. The feeling that no matter what you do or how much you accomplish, you will never be good enough. Hi, hello, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lutzi. Lutz, Lutzi. <laughs> I don't even know how to say my own name anymore. My name is Lutzi, and this is my channel. I just recently converted into speaking English. So this is like my third, my third ever English video. And today I thought we desperately need to talk about self-improvement and the chase for perfection. Because with the new year rolling around, everybody's coming up with their new year's resolutions, myself included, and looking up new productivity trends that they can partake in. But this is something that I have noticed taking over my life. Why do I constantly feel like I'm not accomplished enough for my age, not fit enough, healthy enough, not beautiful enough? If I miss one point on my goddamn to-do list, I'm a failure, huh? I sleep too much, I eat too much sugar, I am not healthy enough, I don't work out enough, uh, my YouTube channel isn't gaining any new subscribers after two years, I thought I would be somewhere else, so that means I failed. Are you noticing something. Now I could just say I'm a perfectionist and call it a day, but I'm not the only one in my generation that feels this constant pressure to improve in some sort of way. And of course, this isn't exclusive to only my generation, X, Y, Z, it doesn't really matter. But this phenomenon of feeling super dissatisfied with our lives is at its peak, even though compared to our parents or grandparents' youth, for instance, we are living in utter wealth and basically cotton candy. I have like, Jesus Christ, I have nothing to complain about. I live in a super beautiful two bedroom apartment with a love of my life. I have everything and anything I could possibly need and even more, I can buy whatever food I wanna eat. I can heat my home. I can watch Netflix all day if I please. I can go to the gym. I can spend extra money on appliances that I don't need like an espresso machine. <laughs> And yet I still am not satisfied. So let's get into it. And you have to be sexy, and you have to be this, and you have to be that, and you have to be nice, and you have to... It's like, I can't be all those things at once. I'm a human being. In the age of social media and spending the majority of our day online, we're very used to seeing perfection. Right from the moment we wake up to seconds before we go to sleep, we see perfect human beings. Beautiful, successful, rich people. People who seem to have it all, who fit everything into one day. Work, workout, uh, meditation, self-care, some goddess, green salad, green juices, a raw vegan diet, uh, and gua sha routine. <laughs> There's influencers praising these crazy supplements that change their lives. But AG1 is awesome. It's a comprehensive powder with 75 vitamins and minerals. Every morning you pull out your vitamins, it has your name on it. I didn't know I could love something this much until I laid my eyes on you. Some company that is trying to make you believe that you need yet another stupid gadget to improve your health or productivity or beauty or whatever. And there's even surgeons out there who tell you how to get rid of your buckle fat. It's really not that bad. It just needs a little <laughs> shaping. To the salon! <laughs> 
all these things that you didn't know you needed until they were shoved in your face. And now you can't stop thinking about it. Can't stop thinking about your chubby cheeks, your uncomfortable mattress, and your overall seemingly very unhealthy lifestyle. The term wellness was popularized in the late 1950s by Dr. Albert L. Dunn and has found great resonance in our society even until today. With the global wellness industry valued at 4.4 trillion US dollars, Yes, that's right, trillion US dollars. And estimated annual growth of 9.9%. .9 wellness companies around the world are making bank. They're making big money. The term itself, wellness, seems to imply to be the opposite of illness, even though wellness in itself doesn't really have to do a whole lot with our overall physical health. Wellness is more like um, a feeling. It's a perception of self. And... Not to bust your bubble, but it's kind of an illusion too. The implication that there is always something that you're doing wrong or something wrong with you that can only be fixed through a certain lifestyle or product that you have to buy is so toxic. You might be perfectly healthy, but that doesn't mean you're well. Have you thought about taking your supplements today? And while you're at it, I just heard of this crazy new thing called sea moss that's supposed to make your skin clear and dewy. While some of these wellness practices and products might improve your overall well-being, the obsession with self-optimization and perfecting your lifestyle doesn't necessarily lead to a healthier life and can potentially even hurt your mental and physical physical health. Maybe because we get super overwhelmed by the sheer amount of diets, practices and products that we can choose from that are available to us. While at the same time, we have very little knowledge about what actually works for us and what only hurts our bank account and might even lead us into an obsession about what we eat and do. And if we're being super honest with ourselves for a second, just for one second, the main goal of most wellness practices still is an external one. It's all about the aesthetics, baby. You still want a slim figure, clear skin, shiny hair, but it's not cool to be so blunt about it anymore. Right now, it's cooler to say, I just want to be healthy. This is all self-care. It's self-care. It's not wanting to fit a certain mold, a body type or trend. And wellness brands know this. That's why all of a sudden dietary products or weight loss products are being marketed as organic, superfruit, nutrient packed or whatever. Basically, it's just greenwashing to make you feel like you're actually doing something good for your body when really the only goal is to lose weight. At its core, wellness culture still thrives off of our insecurities just as much as the beauty industry might. While we're at the topic of aesthetics, why don't we talk about body trends a little bit? Girl, don't do it. It's not worth it. I'm not going to do it, girl. I'm just thinking about it. I'm just thinking about it. I'm, I'm getting surgery on the inside of my cheeks called buckle fat removal, where they remove the fat pads in the cheeks. Lately, the internet has been flooded with articles and posts and videos all around buckle fat. I had never heard of buckle fat before, but now apparently it's all I can think about and I'm super annoyed at it. I have complained about this trend so many times to my boyfriend. He's just as sick of it as I am. <laughs> Basically with buckle fat removal, people are getting their facial fat surgically removed to sharpen up their cheeks and their facial structure a little more to appear more model-esque, if you will. <laughs> Famous example for this alleged buckle fat removal might be Bella Hadid, Dove Cameron, and lately, apparently, Leah Michelle. Of course, buckle fat removal isn't the only surgical treatment that is going viral on the internet. Um, ever since the pandemic started in 2022, we have been seeing a huge trend on social media 
regarding the topic of plastic surgery. So many young people have been showing off their surgery before and after looks like me before my nose job and then they show their side profile and then after. This thing is a trend just as much as there is a BBL trend that, you know, this is like a year or so ago. I don't know if people are still getting BBL since it's kind of out now. Um, <laughs> but it kind of seems like everybody and their mom is getting work done. According to the Aesthetic Plastic Surgery National Data Bank in the US, surgical procedures in 2021 increased by 54% and non-surgical procedures by 44% compared to the year before. And from what I can tell, those numbers are steadily going up as it becomes more and more normalized to get work done to get plastic surgery, even at a very young age. And even though I wanna say, hey, your body, your choice, do whatever you please with it, it's n none of my business, who am I to judge? It does concern me how, especially on social media, it seems like people are making these procedures out to look like they're so simple and attainable for anybody, which they are not. We are still talking about procedures that even though they might be marketed as minimally invasive, they still come with a big set of potentially even life-threatening complications, um, a very long recovery period, and a hefty price tag that not everybody's just gonna be able to afford like that. Neither the reaction to a procedure nor the outcome is a one-size-fits-all model. Everybody's bodies are completely different, and that's the problem with chasing after these very fast-changing body trends, is that something that might look good on somebody else's body might not look good on yours, might not suit your facial structure. For instance, buckle fat removal might look great on Bella Hadid, but might not fit your face. And what are you gonna do if like in a couple of years from now, round faces are back in style and you surgically removed your buckle fat just to appear aesthetic at that time? Our bodies are not clothing or makeup that we can just take off whenever a trend changes. You can buy new makeup, you can buy a new pair of jeans, but you cannot buy a new nose every single time, every five to 10 years. I mean, you could, but let's not. <laughs> While I do think that being open and honest about getting plastic surgery is a lot better than pretending to be all natural, like we've seen before. So today I am gonna get a butt x-ray. <laughs> I also think that the constant repetition of this subject leads to its normalization in our society because the more we hear or see something, the more we believe it, the more it implements in our brains. And then what, do we just start believing that any discomfort that we feel in our own bodies can be solved externally through plastic surgery? Most times when we feel insecure about ourselves, our bodies, we feel uncomfortable with a certain feature that we have, most of the time, we come to appreciate those features or at least accept them later on in life. And this is especially important to tell to young people is that sometimes you just have to sit with it. Sometimes you just have to wait a little bit and get used to yourself. If I remember going back to my youth, <laughs> I'm still young, this sounds so stupid, back to my teenage years, I used to hate my nose because quite frankly, I thought it was really huge. I've been told my whole life that my nose apparently is really big, or it was at least when I was a child or teenager. And when I would look in the mirror, I would think, oh my God, my nose is huge and hideous. I would love to get a nose job. Thankfully, I didn't get a nose job because nowadays my nose is perfectly fine by me. <laughs> I don't care about it that much. It looks, it looks fine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just my nose. I think I either grew into it or it just grew on me. <laughs> my nose grew on me. <laughs> yes, it did. Okay. Back to what I wanted to say. Plus, I'm adding this to the conversation. Body goals and body trends fluctuate all the time. We see this right now. The Kim K slim thick BBL era is coming to an end and we're going straight back to 90s heroin chic, skinny, starving ourselves kind of look. If we constantly chase after these unattainable beauty standards, we are always and forever going to feel ugly. 
at its core, of course, the real problem is capitalism. Because in order to sell products or services, you need to create demand. You have to make people believe that they need your product, they need your service to survive, to be happy, healthy, or beautiful. And well, shit. The same old marketing strategies that have been used for hundreds of years still work on us dummy consumers. It's me. We are the problem. I am the problem. If I want something to change, I need to change. Duh. Constantly comparing ourselves to others online also leads to envy. I'm jealous of you? Yes, you are <laughs> jealous of me. It's clear, everybody says it. is a beast it's a it's a true beast it destroys a person and it definitely destroys a society we start resenting others for being everything that we want to be and we start resenting ourselves for not being like them in order to pass somebody's success or beauty we start believing that we need to put them down or keep others from reaching a level of success on their own i hate that i envy people i hate it about myself i recognize it but i just I can't snap out of it sometimes. I will look at somebody else's Instagram account that is roughly my age and they're posting about their vacation or their recent accomplishment or whatever, their job, and I will instantly feel bad about myself and my accomplishments. Instantly, I will go to the place of thinking they don't deserve this, I deserve it. Why don't I have it? Life is so unfair. And I start spiraling down this road of becoming a total victim making myself the victim. The reason why we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. This is very true when it comes to social media. What we see online is a version of reality. Everyone only posts about the milestones, the happy memories, the amazing moments. How we feel about ourselves and our lives, our accomplishments has a lot to do with who we compare ourselves to. Studies show that people who make up to, let's say, $100,000 a year are happier when living in neighborhoods where the average person makes only $50,000 a year compared to when living in neighborhoods where the average person makes up to $200,000 a year. And that is because we as humans like to compare ourselves to our direct environment, our friends, our colleagues, and of course, neighbors. If we score above the average, we're happy. If we score below it, ooh. The problem with the internet though is that firstly, it's fake. Secondly, it's way too broad. And thirdly, it favors the 1% of people who live in utter luxury and wealth, who can afford anything and everything and simply do not compare to the average person. But the thing is, we spend so much time in these online spaces that these people this fake photoshopped filtered reality of life becomes our direct environment. So are we all just too chronically online? <laughs> Do we all just need to go outside and touch some grass? Um, honestly, I think yes. <laughs> At least for myself, I need to constantly remind myself that I'm perfectly fine where I am. My life is perfectly okay. I don't need to constantly improve on something, whatever it might be. I need to train myself to appreciate what I already have instead of chasing after everything that I don't. Even though personal growth is very important and beneficial to one's self-esteem, it is not necessary at all times. And it should never be dictated by external forces like trends or peer pressure. We are individuals. No two people are the same. We don't have the same background or the same skill set, the same life, the same struggles. And even though the internet and especially social media might make you believe that happiness, health and beauty and success have a certain look that can be achieved through X, Y, Z, there is very little truth to it. Just go look at your partner, your mom, your colleagues, your friends or anybody really that walks on the street and you will find out very quickly that nobody is perfect neither internally nor externally and yet we love each other we care for one another we laugh together and we find beauty in each other's imperfections this strive for perfection 
always leads to an unsatisfied life because it's simply not achievable. Perfection doesn't exist. Great, so now how do we stop it? Just throw the whole internet and society away while we're at it? Obviously that's not gonna happen. It's actually just gonna get worse from here. <laughs> With technology rapidly improving every single day, people are getting more and more used to spending time online in, in online spaces in the metaverse. So if we really wanna change something about our behavior and the way that social media affects us, guess what? We need to set boundaries on how we consume media. And that's really hard. That is really hard because scrolling on my Instagram, for instance, has become my comfort place. I do it all the time. Whenever I'm sitting in silence for two seconds, I grab my phone and I, I just scroll and I notice that. And it's just, it's horrifying that I do this and I know it. I do it even though I know that it hurts my mental health way more than I sometimes like to admit. I just recently read a super interesting article in the German psychology magazine Psychologie Heute, not to confuse with psychology today, even though they have the exact same title, um, but they are apparently two very different magazines. I read an article about self-compassion and how it can really benefit our relationship with ourselves and our personal growth. The basic concept of self-compassion is that instead of criticizing ourselves when we fail, when we make a mistake or feel inadequate, we comfort ourselves we support and encourage ourselves just like a good friend would our natural instinct is for some reason always to be very harsh to ourselves because we believe that it makes us do better become better um, work harder and become stronger but that isn't necessarily the case i just recently had a call with a podcast producer who wanted me to voice over one of the characters for his new fiction podcast, which I was super excited about, by the way. Even though the call went pretty well, he was very, very nice, super encouraging, and we had a productive talk overall, I felt super unprofessional and stupid the entire time. And then when it came to the money talk, I basically couldn't stand my ground because firstly, I had no idea how much my work was actually worth um, or how to negotiate payment. Um, and plus I also felt like I wasn't good enough anyway to ask for much. So I just accepted his first offer, which I was honestly fine with, but afterward I kind of felt very childish and dumb. <laughs> My whole day was done for because I couldn't snap out of feeling disappointed in myself. And I later realized that I would never make such a big deal out of that situation if it happened to a friend of mine. I would simply just tell them, it's no big deal. Like it happens to the best of us. It's fine. It's okay to feel awkward. Next time you'll be wiser. Next time you'll know better. You are a professional. Don't question that. If I had told myself those things instead of dwelling in negativity, I might have felt way more content with my little fail of the day. Moral of the story is, instead of thinking, I need to improve on this or that, I'm not good enough at this or that, I should change this about myself, think like a friend. A friend might give you an honest opinion and advice on what you should do to become the best version of yourself or achieve your goal, but it will always come from a place of love and not hate. They wouldn't pressure you to change. They would encourage you to take the steps necessary to achieve your goal. And they wouldn't expect you to do it for them, but for yourself. So what do we take away from this video and this whole conversation? Yes, New Year's resolutions can be a great thing for you, but no, they also don't have to be. <laughs> if you wanna improve on something or change something about yourself, ask yourself, am I doing it truly just because I wanna be better or am I doing it for somebody else, for external validation even? Because pleasing others is never, ever, ever gonna make you happy. This video also was kind of for myself because I needed to reflect on this issue that I have myself with constantly improving on something, with my self-esteem and 
feeling like I have to be perfect all the time. Maybe you and I just need to be reminded of these things every once in a while. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section down below so that I can know your feelings about this topic or about my channel or about me. But please be kind though. <laughs> stay tuned, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye bye. That was awful. That was awful and it took me hours to record because every time I say a sentence, I have to repeat it 500 times until it's perfect because I'm a fucking perfectionist. <laughs>